All right, everybody. Uh, it's time for some honest truth. Obesity is a choice. Ooh. I know. I know. That's, Ooh. Ooh, I can hear a pin drop on yeah, that one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> now, I do, I do want to say this first. Wow. Before, before we get into it, um, that doesn't mean it's not uh, super hard to deal with. That doesn't mean that oftentimes the cards aren't stacked against you. That doesn't mean that there are easier and harder situations. Um, and I would even say and that people don't, and it's not that we shouldn't deal with it with empathy understand, and understanding. But yeah. what I said is very true. Uh, being obese is largely, very much largely a choice. Do you think there are exceptions to the rule? Very, very little. It, it, medical exceptions. Like less are, than 10%, less than 5%, less than 1%. Less than 1%. Less than 1%. Mm, yeah, it's a very, very small. Now, there's a, a range of sizes that people can come in, genetically speaking. I'm talking about obesity. I'm not talking about uh, you know 15 pound difference between one yeah. person and another person, but rather the 30, 40, 50, 60 plus pounds of body fat that we see now that it's so commonplace. And it, and I know that the arguments, oh my God, this genetics are to play, and it's so, and you know that's not quite true. If you just go back 150 years or so, for example, there's the famous pictures of circus back in the day circuses used to have what are called freak shows and they stopped doing these because they're you know kind of taking advantage of or poking fun at things that I don't think we should yeah deformities and like yeah, that, yeah and it was terrible right we'd have like the bearded lady or or you know the crab claw kids with you know deformed hands and a common one in circus freak shows was like the circus what they would call the circus fat man or fat woman and if you look at these people they have we have pictures of them at the turn of the century they were, these people would not, they wouldn't turn any heads today. They were like 400 pounds or something. Right? 300 maybe yeah. pounds. And today they wouldn't turn any heads, but they were so big at the turn of the century. You know, you're talking about like, you know, 1890s or 1900 that people paid money to look at them because mm -hmm. it was so wild and so odd. And we didn't evolve. We don't evolve so quickly that all of a sudden our genetics change so rapidly that now being obese is something that we don't have control over. Um, it does. It just doesn't well, work that way. I think culturally we've normalized it so much now that um, yeah, that you don't. I mean, that's why I think that that cuts through so hard. Yeah. Right. Is because it's we're getting so much information about you know what 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 it is that is actually like uh you know something that is causing you to have this you know um obesity this this disease this is not you know your fault like you're a victim of this uh you know instead and and and, and to be fair like a lot of it is wrapped in with trauma and so there's there's a lot to unpack there it's not like an easy no. thing to address totally and, and we, you know there's lots of empathy it needs to be uh you know, given to, to people in that state, but th it should be an empowering message that you can, uh, you can choose to, to really address it. That's, that's a hundred percent accurate. Um, you can have empathy and be honest. Actually that's true, it. true empathy and love is honest. That's right. It's not lying, uh, but it doesn't, it's not being a jerk. Right. So what I'm not saying is obesity is a choice. Uh, so, you know, so, you know, stop complaining and just go take it or whatever. And it's all, you know, no, no, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is <clears throat> it is a choice. It's hard as hell. Mm -hmm. But one of the worst things that we did around obesity with popular messaging and the fitness industry is partially to blame, but popular media in general is mostly to blame is the disempowering message that it's not your fault, that mm -hmm. you have no power. I should say you have no power over it. What a terrible message that we sold message. people. Now, why is that message? Why is that the popular message? Because the it sells one hundred percent. The right. the the personal responsibility empowering message doesn't sell bullshit products. <clears throat> it just doesn't. If I'm here trying to sell you a product, and I say to you, "Hey, look, you know your choices and what you choose to eat and how you're active and your relationship with food," that's largely what will change this. You're not buying anything from me, but if I say it's, it's not, not your, your fault, fault. Yeah. it's your genetics. Oh my God, we got this pill though that'll fix it. You're gonna buy what I have to sell. If I'm a politician, uh, I am not gonna get elected on a message of "Hey, this is in your power. Here's things you can do." I'm gonna get elected by saying it's not your fault. There's nothing you can do, but if you elect me, I'll fix it for you. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's this terrible, terrible message. And then what clouds it are assholes and jerks 
that like to point out the, I guess, the folly in obesity. The problem is when you're uh, when you're obese, your challenges are are out in display for everybody, right? So. If you're an alcohol, if you're a functioning alcoholic or drug addict or gambling addict or you yeah. know we sex could be addict, operating or, the same room and not know, you wouldn't know. I, I can't look at someone walking down yeah, the street yeah. and be like, "Wow, look at that shitty husband or bad person," right? I, I don't know. I don't know that. But it's I could look at someone who's 80 pounds overweight and say, "Oh, they they have challenges with exercise and nutrition." I think and, that's why it's such a sensitive topic, right? Totally. There. That's exactly why because it's not. It's like you can't. Um, you can't hide it the same way that you can hide other conditions totally. or issues, right? So, the, you know, it's weird, though. It's like, I don't think that statement, I mean, I was kind of teasing you about my reaction um, because I know that there's it'll trigger somebody. Uh, but the truth is that, that just 20 years ago, that wasn't like a, that, there was no debate around that. There's a whole that. lot of controversy there. Yeah, there was yeah. no, but it, because this, the, this uh, idea of um, health at any size, uh, that movement and that, you know, you know, uh, demonizing trainers or health professionals or fitness people that are talking about obesity is like fat shaming. I think because of that movement in that direction, it becomes like this ooh taboo conversation. It's like it, it's not. It's pretty straightforward, actually. It's, yeah, you know, it's like, and it, and it, and it again, I can say it without, um, without it being that I'm 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 shaming you for it. Like I have I have tremendous empathy. I mean, majority of the clients that I help most of my life struggle with this in one way or another. It's the reason why what we do, what we talk about is not the X's and O's. Most of the time it's about mm -hmm. behavior stuff. hundred percent. Right? And, and we, why we recommend that people go, if you, especially if you battle with this and you are uh, morbidly obese, that you see a therapist because there's normally uh, a root cause of this. And it's not just thermo law of thermodynamics. That's the, that's of course the, the science behind why we got in this situation, but it's not the, the, the true mechanism that has caused us yes. to go down this. And so I think you can say those things and, and also still have empathy. Look, uh, simple does not mean easy. Okay. Climbing Mount Everest, uh, I mean, technically speaking <clears throat> requires putting the right foot in front of the left. That's simple. It. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's simple, but does that make it easy? No, it's hard as hell. Right. Um, stopping stopping an alcohol addiction. Simple. Don't stop drinking alcohol, right? Does that make it easy? No. Obesity is a challenging issue. Uh, but the, the formula is simple. And the problem is a lot of people in fitness, they understand that obesity is a choice from that perspective. And they treat simple as easy. Well, you're just lazy. Yeah. Or you're just, yeah, whatever. No, 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 no. It's challenging and it's hard. But that also doesn't mean that it is a choice that you're making every single day. And your choice can be to move in one direction or stay on the path that you are. But you have to empower yourself first. The problem, the challenge with being empowered is it requires the responsibility and the understanding that you have control. Mm -hmm. And that's a hard thing to do. It, it's a hard thing to look at your life or your situation, something that's causing you so much pain. It's very hard to sit down after, I don't know, 15 years or maybe your whole life of having this pain and saying, oh man, a lot of this is my... It's my fault. Like there was a lot of things I could have done that did I didn't do, or there's a lot of things I did that contributed to this. That's a very painful realization. But mm -hmm. if you don't make that realization, it, nothing happens, right? Nothing will ever happen for you. So, and the, part of the reason why Adam, I think the messaging around obesity has started to move in the direction you were saying, is because we're getting to the point where a majority of people in modern societies are obese, mm -hmm. and now when most people are obese. Well, the popular messaging now is, "Hey, leave me alone! Don't tell me it's fat shaming." And uh, and I uh, know it's not it, it's not a, a choice, and it's not my fault type of deal, mm -hmm. uh, because I get it. You don't want to hear it. You just don't. You ever try to talk to somebody who's got a real issue with some form of addiction or dysfunction, and they don't want to hear it? Yeah. You ever try? Yeah. It's 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 just a it's a losing battle, and they don't want to hear it, and they don't hear it, and it's well, they don't hear anything you have to say. Yeah, especially now because there's so many um, different narratives out there to glom onto that will help kind of um, you know feed your uh, your justification of of the you know well this is the the identity that now you've you've uh, assumed so now this is who i am and this i'm proud and you know and there's all these other things that kind of go in that direction that you can get behind and it's it's a whole industry it's a whole industry of um feeding you bullshit in a sense uh to make you feel better 
uh, which, you know, is something that everybody kind of struggles with that right now because there's so much information out there that you can really get whatever it is you're looking for. But what what is really, truly healthy for you? What is really, truly will feed you, um, you, you know, sustenance that will will then move you in a direction where your body is going to benefit from it and, you know, everything else will now, transpire. I, th I think that money and marketing is is largely responsible for this messaging but i also think that the fitness industry is very responsible too yeah. i think it's a it's an overcorrection from the shitty job that we've done for yep. the last you know 3 Since 4 the decades beginning. yeah we just i mean and look at how we still we still do it we still you know uh put bodies up there to show transformation uh, pictures. We still promote this motivation, hype, extreme uh, ways of training and encourage Glorify it with shows like The Biggest Loser. That's and right. So I, I think that, uh, and, and I think that's the where I have empathy for the, the people that kind of side with that messaging of health at every size and kind of are pushing back. Where I understand it is that it's a, it's a correction from the other extreme. It's more a rejection of the terrible right. messaging yeah. and all the crap diets. You know, here's a here's another controversial fact. Uh, people who struggle with obesity will have more success hiring a therapist than they will following a diet or hiring a lot of trainers. Mm -hmm. That's the truth because a lot of this is not is not due to the fact that you don't know what's healthy and what's not healthy. It's it's more around the behaviors. And what's driving it, and how you feel about yourself. And, and by the way, too, uh, we're, we're talking about obesity right now, but that is—I think that's um, this is uh, connected to to anything that you you struggle with in life. Whether anything be, that, you, that you use, whether to it be hurt financial, yes. whether it be uh, the way you talk to and communicate to your your spouse or your your partner, the way you treat your children, the way you interact with uh, your peers, like. So much of this is rooted in in the way you were raised or the trauma that you've been through, and then this is just a reflection of that. It's just another one of those. This 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 person has now just chosen to cope with it through food and overeating or lack of exercise and movement or the combination of yeah. the two of them. But they're they're no worse or better than somebody who, like you were kind of alluding to early on that you know, yeah. beats their wife or freaking get screams at their kid or, you know, gambles like crazy and loses all their money. Like all these things are, are issues that are, are, are rooted in something deeper than the, the, the actual mechanism that you're, yeah. that everyone's being able to see. Yeah. I, I'm sure there's, you know, we have a large audience. Like if you're watching or listening, just raise your hand if you're perfect, right? I can tell you right now, nobody is going to raise their hand, raise your hand. If you have a challenge with something that tends to cause you damage or trouble in your relationships or your own health, right? Uh, everybody's raising their hand. So obesity is visible and it's easy to pick on. And if you're a kid, you get picked on for it and you feel not attractive. And then the marketing and messaging is, so I get it. I get it, right? We're in an environment, we're, we're in a world now where markets have done such a damn good job of giving us what we want. And what mm -hmm. we've told markets that we want is fast, cheap, tasty food. So that's what we have a lot of. And markets, we've also told markets what we want is I don't want to move. I, I want to relax all the time. So lots of products and services are, I mean, DoorDash exploded because uh, people like to sit at home. They don't, I don't even want to drive down the street to get food. I want it to come right to my door, right? Yeah. At some point, I'm sure there's going to be a service where they come to your couch. I don't want to walk to the door. <laughs> I mean, I'm, we're laughing, but uh, I wouldn't be totally shocked if there was something like that, right? So yeah. it's an environment that's challenging. It requires a completely different approach, but that does not mean that it's not uh, that obesity is not a choice. That it doesn't come from choices that you make on a daily basis. And so that's the thing that we need to understand. We have to start there. We have to start with the I have a lot of power. Oh, by the way, I'm not saying everybody is going to get shredded. We're all gonna look like super mod. That's not what I'm saying. Okay, I'm so I'm talking about just generally healthy. Okay, not uh, uh ex you know obesity or extreme in the other direction. I'm just talking about general health. But it starts with people saying, "I have a lot of control and power over this, but mm -hmm. boy, is this hard. I don't know what to do, and I don't know what that looks like. But I do know that I have a lot of control and power. And you have to start there. You can't start with I have no control and no power over this, and I'm I'm uh, this is I am." 
all of this is a result of things out of my control. So, like, where do you go from there, right? Well, do you, do you think, right. because obviously it's becoming the norm, like you're saying, yeah. like, it's more and more of the majority is, is becoming... Uh, you know, they're, oh, they're, the majority is already overweight. Yeah. And well, B's, I think, that like almost 40%. 40% is yeah. what I think I read last. So based off of that, um, do you predict that that will be a motivator to drive traffic into gyms? Or do you think that it'll become like, a, oh, well, this is just how I am. Why I even go to the gym and work out? So do you think it's going to impact gyms and the fitness space in a positive or a negative or a, 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 net, a net, you know, Net zero from it, it. It depends. And here's what I think. I mm. think if gyms want to be successful, um, I'm glad you brought that up, by the way, because I wanted to talk about gyms also on some other topics. But along with lines of what you're saying, I think if we start to talk about fitness and its benefits on mental health, mm. I think we'll have way more success. And stop focusing so hard on the physical, visible changes that it, it provides, which it does. It does yeah. make you look different. It does... You know, you look healthier, more fit, more muscle, you know, less body fat, all that stuff. But if you ask anybody, I swear to God, go ahead, talk to anybody who's worked out consistently for more than 10 years and ask them to list the top five reasons why they like to exercise and work out. I guarantee you one of the top five, if not number one, is the mental benefits. Yeah. I guarantee you. It's not the it makes me look good and I like being buffed and I like looking whatever. It's the mental health effects. And I think that's what we need to focus more on. Could you imagine if people worked out just because they knew it made them feel better mentally and emotionally? You imagine the side effects of that and, and what oh, that would look like? Just a happier society? Oh, I would love that. Oh. It's just like, yeah, I think a mental part of it is a huge factor. And I, I, I think with this information, like we just saw one study that finally came out, you know, that, that proves that uh, you know, lowering your body fat will help, you know, be more resistant towards uh, any kind of diseases out there, any kind of illnesses, you know. And I think that uh, for some reason, we just, we forgot that or, or like the general population just ignored that fact that's been around. Like we've known that and we didn't need a study to tell yeah. us that, uh, but apparently we do. And so I think with more of these studies finally like kind of emerging uh, and showing people and proving people that if you do make better choices with your food nutrition and you move more you get exercise you get sunlight uh you know you're gonna you're gonna be healthy you're gonna thrive you're gonna be energetic again hopefully that's the push then to put people yeah. back i mean that's the, the hope but the truth is you know media is in the the business of attracting eyes and viewers and nobody wants to hear that that's work yeah, it's not but, sexy. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it is. Sell. You know, it, but the other option does, isn't working. No, you yeah. got to make people. The, yeah. the, the pill form is not working. No, no. You yeah, but I almost feel like the come back messaging to around giving those people hope that they won't have to do anything about it. Like you know, it'd be a better headline, and that will get more attention and more views and more people talking about it is. You know, Pfizer comes out with a pill potentially that could reduce body fat by, yeah. you know, 2% if you take it every single day for the next five years. Like, that's more sure. interesting and will get more attention than all the things that you're well, saying think, right now, too, which is unfortunate. I think, too, when you market fitness uh, so heavily on, on the visible changes, the physical, like, aesthetic changes, that a lot of it causes a lot of shame self, and hate. <laughs> Within yourself, very powerful short-term motivator, by the way, right? If you hate yourself and you feel disgusting, you're likely to buy a gym membership or buy supplements or do something in the short term. Terrible long term. The long term, it fails because at some point you get you just can't you don't want to hate yourself anymore, and so you you end up stopping. But a very short term, a very po uh, powerful short term motivator. But I again, I think telling people focusing on the visible physical changes is going to motivate people the wrong way. I think if we because here's a fact, and this is one that is just, it's profoundly under, um, I guess, under-delivered, under-represented, uh, maybe misunderstood. The effects that movement and exercise have on mental health are, prof there's no drug that we have on the market that comes close. Mm -hmm. It's at least as effective in the short term as very powerful SSRI drugs. In the long term, more effective. There's no. T you don't build a tolerance. It actually keeps getting better, right? Mm -hmm. Drugs tend to not get better after a certain period of time. You have to change drugs. There's other side effects. Mm -hmm. The side effects of the mental he health effects of exercise are you get leaner, stronger, more energy, hormone balance, like all these positive, incredible things. 
Um, so I think that's the message that we need to push a little bit, which is part of the reason why I said in a previous episode, why I think we're about to see an explosion in gym memberships. I think people kind of are feeling that. I don't know if they're super aware of it, but they're feeling like I got to get out and get moving. Yeah. And then combine that with, which I think is a negative thing, the new fear around, uh, I don't know if you're seeing the messaging around obesity and COVID, but that's really starting to Well, that's the explode. thing. It, it, I just, I feel like, you know, at some point people are going to go back to the grassroots of like mm -hmm. what we were initially trying to do for improving our, our overall health. We all knew what that looked like. Yeah. It's not a mystery, you know, it's just been bombarded mm -hmm. with this new thing that came about out of nowhere. And all of a sudden now pharmaceuticals yeah. are the only answer. Yeah. It's not, it doesn't yeah. make any sense yeah. to me. Step one, uh, realize that you have a lot of impact and control over it. Step two, hire somebody that can coach you properly. Therapists do a damn good job. A really good experienced trainer or coach will do a a damn good job. And then step three, uh, be kind to yourself because it takes time and it's really hard. Um, and, and, and then you'll have the best mm. chances. You'll have the best chances. The problem is in the past, people are like, okay, I have control. I think, let me buy this pill, right? Or let me follow this crazy diet. And then, and then, and then it fails and then they do it again and it fails. And then right. what's the message that they get? It's out of my control, right? I can't do anything about it. This is just the way it is and yeah. whatever. It's not my fault. And then you get pissed off and angry. And you go in the other direction where you're like, anybody who tells me otherwise is fat shaming me. Yeah, Definitely. and you're always in a fight. Yeah. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.